Imagine this common scenario. Your game has a switch, and that switch can open a chest, or light a brazier, or spawn an enemy, and each of those things in turn could activate other things, and so on and so forth. And something that activates would probably need to deactivate, and reset, probably initialize. So what we have is a bunch of objects that ultimately behave differently, but that have enough of the same stuff that it would be really great if we could treat them all the same way in our code. Meaning I shouldn't have to worry if I'm dealing with a switch, a chest, an enemy, what have you. I should just be able to know that that thing has an activate method on it and call it. If all of our activatables, let's call them, inherit from the same node type, we can just write a class, slap it on top, and call it a day. But we can't because they don't. However, we can work around this limitation using C-sharp interfaces to create our own versions of these nodes that can be treated the same way. Let me show you how. An interface defines a contract that a class or struct must adhere to by specifying a set of members that the implementing type must provide functional details for. All right, so I hate that. Uh, especially since interfaces really aren't that hard to understand. They may be hard to explain, though, so we're going to do our usual jumping in with both feet, and all will be made clear by video's end. Here is the interface we'll be working with. At first glance, you might be thinking, hey, this looks a lot like a C-sharp class. It's true. It does. Let me point out the differences real quick. First, we use the interface keyword as opposed to class when declaring an interface. Along with this, you might notice that the word partial is missing. We're not inheriting from a node type, so it's not necessary. By their nature, interfaces do not and cannot inherit from anything else. Next is the interface name, I activatable. Putting a capital I before the interface name is a common C sharp convention, but not required. I could delete the I, just call it activatable, and it would be equally valid. But for clarity in code, I recommend keeping it on. What looks extra weird is the interface body. It's got some events, a property, and then some method signatures but there's no implementation anywhere. It's sort of like it's just a list of stuff. Because that's exactly what interfaces are. They're just a list of stuff a class might have, except for variables, because those allocate memory and interfaces aren't allowed to do that. After we have an interface defined, we can attach it to a class which does two things. One, it makes that stuff available in the class we attached it to, though we do have to provide implementation details in the class itself. And two, it allows us to identify objects of that class by the interface. Now that our interface is defined, we can use it to create our own versions of nodes that could be activatables, allowing us to treat them all the same in our code. We'll start by making an activatable sprite 2D, which I have open on the left side of the screen, and I have the interface open on the right so you can see how everything relates back. Our activatable sprite 2D script is just like any other script that inherits from a node type, and this one correctly inherits from sprite 2D. Now, we attach the interface to the class by putting a comma after the inherited class name, a space, and then our interface name. And now we've got some red. That's because we've attached the interface, but we haven't provided implementation for the things in the interface. Each class that utilizes an interface has to provide its own implementation details. Once we do, the red will go away. We'll start with adding the events. If you caught my videos on signals and events, you know that events are delegates, which are just lists of methods. That means events aren't really implemented until you add methods to them, so fulfilling our obligation to implement the events from an interface is as easy as listing them. These events are intended to be broadcast on activation and deactivation respectively, and the activatable will pass itself as a reference to any class that's interested. I marked the events public because you always want your events accessible, but it goes deeper than that. Take a look at our interface. Notice something about accessor modifiers? They're not there. That's because everything that goes into an interface is public. Not by default, it just is public. An interface defines how other classes relate to the class utilizing the interface, and since those other classes won't see protected or private data, it doesn't belong in an interface. If you're hoping to use interfaces as a way to enforce implementation of protected or private members, what you're actually looking for is an abstract class, which is a whole other topic. So now both of these events are available to use in our activatable sprite 2D. Let's fill in the rest of the body real quick. 
Remember, the idea is to make more specialized classes from this class. So I want to add everything in a way that allows me to overwrite it if I want to, but I shouldn't be required to implement things in my child classes if I don't need to. So our state properties are implemented with a protected set so child classes can set them, and their use should be pretty self-explanatory. Then we implement each of the methods as virtual with empty bodies so they can exist and be called in loops with other activatables all without breaking anything. Initialize is for setup. Reset is for resetting back to the default state. This activate method allows me to pass in the triggering activatable, while this one provides easy access for things that can trigger this activatable that are not activatables themselves. And then lastly, deactivation. Now you just repeat the process for every node you want an activatable variant of. You can copy and paste the entire class body because none of the code is node specific. It's all related to the interface. Then when you want an activatable version of a node, just create it like you always would. And when you go in to edit your script, change the base class type to your activatable class type. And you have yourself a node that is both its base type as well as an iActivatable with all of that base functionality to build on. But Noah, I hear you saying, you're just calling methods on your class type. That's just the same as what we've always done. You promised to show us how to treat all nodes the same. Okay, just, okay. Yeah, and calling custom method on a custom class isn't super impressive. I get that. Where the power of this approach really comes in handy is in the editor, especially in being able to load whatever we want into an inspector field. Here I have a basic scene with a switch, chest, enemy, and brazier. Oh, and there's a label here too for visual feedback. Checking out the scene tree, you can see these are all different node types and each inherits from an activatable variant of their base class. Here we're in the switch.cs class, which inherits from activatable animated sprite 2D. We're going to activate all of the other activatables from this switch class. First, we'll need an inspector field to load our targets into. C-sharp arrays are the simplest collection we've got, so that's what we'll use to load the activatables in. I'm using a property because I like to use properties for inspector fields, but it's not mandatory. You could use a variable here if you wanted to. This is important. We have to load them in as nodes. Godot does not know how to display C-sharp interfaces in the inspector. We will have to do some conversion, and since everything that could be loaded into an inspector will be a node of some kind, it's the safest type to use here. Next, we have to set up an activate method to handle what happens to our switch, as well as activate all of its targets. So, we play an animation and play a sound and display a little something to the label for feedback. Then we loop through our targets, check to see if they are inactivatable, and if so, call their activate methods. We don't have to check for each individual type just I activatable. Now I'm going to add a quick and easy way to activate this for testing. Save out script and head back to Godot. Back in Godot, we'll build our project to get the array to show, load up our targets, and hit play. Now I'm going to activate the switch in three, two, one, and boom goes the dynamite. Four different node types, all activatables, three of them being handled exactly the same way in code, just as I promised. A booyah. Now that we've got the result we want, let's refine our code. This little bit down here can be cleaned up, since we'll likely be using it frequently. For that, we'll use an extension method. I'm not going to get into how extension methods work in this video, they're a topic unto themselves, but they're another reason I like C Sharp. Extension methods allow us to add our own custom methods to pre-existing types. If you put this code somewhere in your project, you're adding the ability for a C-sharp array of nodes to return itself as a filtered iActivatable array. So if you accidentally pass a node that's not an activatable, it just won't be included, so it's nice and safe too. Now we can clean all of this up just by doing a quick one-line conversion and then the loop. Up until now, I've been using the language attach and utilize when I talk about how a class relates to an interface. I did that so as to not complicate things for you while you're first seeing how interfaces can improve your life. 
I didn't want to have confusing language bouncing around in the back of your head, detracting you from what is ultimately a simple concept folks tend to struggle with. But we're not attaching the interface to the class, we're inheriting from it. In C Sharp, a class can only inherit from one other class. That's called single inheritance, and a lot of languages, GD script included, roll that way. However, you can inherit from as many interfaces as you want. That's called multiple inheritance. If you expanded on the concepts I showed you in this video, you can have activatables, breakables, burnables, and any litany of specializations handled via interfaces and multiple inheritance. Just another tool in your game dev toolbox. To summarize, interfaces define non-memory allocating members that a class could have. Members of an interface must be given implementation in the class that inherits from the interface. All members implemented from an interface are of public scope. Interface members are available in all class types that inherit from the interface without the need to convert the class objects type to the interface. And class objects can be identified by their inherited interfaces. I showed you interfaces using activatables because they're on my mind. I'm making a very traditional dungeon crawler, and all of my rooms and things that go in them go through the same cycle of initialization, reset, activation, deactivation, and being able to manage them all the same way was super important to me. If this use case doesn't apply to you, hopefully you can see where interfaces would be useful for setting up similar things like power-ups or weapons or inventory items or something like that, or how they could be a cleaner alternative to making custom components, at least in some cases. So yeah, interfaces, they're pretty neat.